Hello and welcome to another episode of Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am your host Talal and today I'm joined by a very, very special guest. Um, this person is actually an executive coach and a speaker who has advised top leaders at companies including TripAdvisor, Sanofi, Genzyme and Havas. Uh, and actually serves as an executive coach for Harvard Business School Executive Education and has guest lectured at MIT. And prior to becoming an executive coach, more than about a decade ago, uh, she served as a senior leader in the advertising industry where she oversaw a team of 75 employees as a SVP of media at Digitas. She managed media planning for Fortune 500 clients including General Motors, Federal Express and Delta. She draws on her extensive management experience as well as her in-depth training in coaching methodology to advise senior executives and high performers transitioning into leadership roles. So without much further ado, please help me welcome and Sugar. Hi, Anne. Thank Aww. you so much for making the time to he be here with us. Oh, well, thank you so much for the really nice interview. I really appreciate it. No worries. I'm really excited about this um, because, you know, we, we actually connected to our mutual friend, Dory Clark. Um, yes. And uh, she very kindly made the introduction and, and uh, immediately I was like, well, this, this seems like the perfect fit. So I was very excited to actually connect with you and have you on the show. Uh, well, thank you. And she speaks so highly of you as well. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. Thank you very much. And for people who are actually watching this, uh, if you haven't caught that interview before with Dory Clark, you can go to the channel, Hustle is for Life Motivation, and uh, you can find that interview there that I did with Dory Clark. And she's actually just launched her new book, Entrepreneurial You, and it's all about how you can monetize your expertise. So make sure you go and check that out. It's absolutely jam-packed full of value. But now back to this one. And um, yes, I just want to actually start maybe a little bit from the beginning. I, I think mm -hmm. it's really important for people to, you know, know who you are and uh, what what you actually have managed to achieve. So maybe let's let's talk about your journey, uh, about how you were working in advertising and how you now are working as a executive leadership coach. Oh, uh, yes, definitely. So I think, you know, it's something interesting for me is really going after your passions, right? So I grew up in a household where everybody was either a math teacher or an engineer. And I was this person <laughs> who I wanted to write stories. I wanted to read books all day long. So I was one of, I was the oldest of five kids and I was just really different. And the one thing that always drew me to, um, that always kind of pulled me was advertising. Wow. So I graduated from school and, you know, it's interesting. My father said to me, well, if you're going to be in advertising, the only place to be is in New York. And I thought, oh, my God, I, I, I can't go to New York. I grew up in Boston. There's no way I'm going to go to New York City. But that's another story for another time. And I ended up in New York and I worked there for about 10 years. And I worked on, I'm dating myself for a lot. I worked on the launch of the Apple um, Apple computer back in the 80s, American Express wow. corporate card. Wow. So what, you know, what I really saw that I think, it, and I'll get to the end of my story here, is to really learn and think about creativity, mm. right? Yeah. And I, I really think, and we can talk about this too, is that everybody can be creative. There is not one person out there. And, you know, I've researched it and thought about it a lot. Um and so I was in advertising. I moved back to Boston, and I've been. A, I was in advertising for about twenty years. Wow! And advertising, I mean, I went from the evolution of you know working on the launch of Apple to working on the launch of many General Motors cars, and it was fantastic. But over time, for me, advertising wasn't so much about creativity and the people anymore, um, as much. And what I really learned, you know, as I grew into senior leadership, I kind of really took a step back from doing the day to day was I really, it was really focused on the people for me. And you and I have talked about, you know, what does it, what's important, right? In terms of people, right? And being a good leader. And we've talked about being kind and, you know, we can talk about too, you know, it's a lot about hard work. Yeah. Um, 
And so I saw an executive coach because I was at this point in my career where advertising, while I loved it, wasn't for me anymore. So I decided I wanted to be an executive coach. I went back to school and I, I stopped working in advertising and kind of just jumped off the cliff. And I don't recommend that to everybody. <laughs> by any, by any, you know, yeah. for many people I say, you know what, if you have a passion in being a stand-up comic or you have a passion about this, do that on the side. Don't, mm. don't quit your full-time job. I did. That was just who I am as a person. Um, so I went and got certified I've, I've, on many things, you know, Myers-Briggs, all those certifications. And so I've been coaching now for about 18 years. Wow. So, uh, uh, mm, yeah, about 15 to 18 years now, awesome. a little over a awesome. decade. That's really kind of, in a nutshell, my story. Awesome. Awesome. I, I think that's a great story. And, and people who are actually watching this, maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you can relate to, uh, you know, Anne's story where you have been in a job or uh, in, in a career where you have just had enough or maybe the fact that the, the excitement has just fizzled out and you're looking for something different. You're looking for something new, something that excites you again, something that actually, you know, sets you on fire and, you know, yeah. makes your heart sing at the end of the day. And for Anne, obviously, that was, you know, coaching. And it might, for you, it might be something else and that's absolutely fine. But, you know, it, you might be able to relate to this and say, hey, I'm in a similar sort of situation or I have been in a similar sort of situation. And then... Think about what happened next for Anne. I mean, she jumped straight in, okay? But she gave great advice there to say, look, don't quit your full-time job. You know, pursue your passion on the side, build it up, and then see where it goes. And if you're able to actually then, you know, generate some income out of it, then yeah, sure, obviously you can think about going into it full-time, but don't just ha jump straight in. Um, however, I think for people who have that type A type of personalities, you know, we, we are the kind of people who want to jump straight in and, and make things happen. So, you know, I can, I can relate to that for sure, you know, just wanting to dive straight in and then make things happen. Right. And, you know, I think, too, it wasn't this, oh, I just want to be an executive coach, right? Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the most important things is to kind of pick and choose. Well, what do you like yeah. and what are you good at? Mm. What's your strength, right? And so for me, when I was managing 75 people, that's where I got my kind of like, ah, passion, <laughs> right? Yeah. And there is a very big difference between mentoring somebody on your team mm. versus coaching somebody. But for me, I found the ultimate joy in seeing somebody on my team promoted, right? Wow. So, though, so it was kind of that parallel transition, right, in terms of, oh, this is something that really makes me happy. Mm. So how yeah. can I do that? How can I do more of that? Yeah. It is, is, is really how I started to think about it. Awesome. And again, that's fantastic advice for anybody who might be considering a career change or you might be at a position where, you know, you don't have that excitement anymore in your job role. Then again, this is great advice. You know, work with your strengths. Work with your strengths. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that's fantastic. And thank you for sharing that. That's great. Right. And I think, too, people think, oh, well, you know what? I was meant to be in this career. I, I have to be in advertising no matter what. But and I, I forget the exact research, but I think we have four careers I think it's four to five careers over the course of our lifetime. Yeah. Different changes, mm. right? Yeah. So, you know, it's not a good or a bad thing to change, yeah. to make changes yeah. in your career. Sure, sure. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, before, uh, you know, it, it was the idea that you're going to get a job for life. You're going to retire with a pension you know, and a gold right. watch, you know, the whole thing. But, you know, it, we're living in the 21st century now. And, uh, you know, it's the, the world has changed. The rules have changed. And you're right. You know, on average, people change careers quite often now, maybe even four to five times uh, yes. in, in their working life. So, yeah, no, I totally agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what, one thing I want to highlight for people is the amazing advice you have given about, you know, how you need to think about working with your strengths, how you need to actually be strategic about that move. And I love that. So, you know, I, I think that added a lot of value to people for sure. Great. Awesome. Um, just I think there's if we think about strengths for one second, yeah. there's a great book um, that I highly recommend people take. It's Strength Finder 2.0. And it's right. you take the book. And you can take the assessment in it, right? So just a nice kind of um, add-on to think about getting validation of your strengths. Fantastic. Well, and that's going on my reading list right now. I'm going to write this down. It's Strength Finder. 
2.0. Okay. Yep. Thomas Rath. 2.0. Thomas Rath. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. I've just written that down, and that will be going on my reading list. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. Absolutely. So, Anne, um, I know you have worked you know, with a lot of high profile clients who mm -hmm. you have coached in terms of, you know, how they can be more effective leaders, how they can manage their teams better, how they can yes. improve the efficiency of their actual processes and procedures and all sorts of other stuff. So mm -hmm. I really want to ask you, how do you define uh, being a leader or leadership? Oh, that's a great question. I think that really about being a leader is, to, is a couple things. And there's many different, you know, kind of flavors and definitions. But I'm somebody, I like to think about it simply for, you know, I like to think about it simply. And it's really about having a strategic vision, mm. right? And what is that strategic vision? But also, more importantly, you need to have the emotional intelligence or the skills to have people on your teams follow you. Oh. And be part of that strategic mm. vision because you can't do it on your own. Yeah. And I, I coach a lot of people on that. Very successful people that are very creative, have fantastic strategic visions. But how do you manage a team? How do you influence a team? Influence your peers? People forget about influencing their peers, mm. I think, a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I think those are two kind of really core components when you think about leadership. Awesome. And obviously there's a lot more, but I think that, you know, if I was to take us, if you were just to have a quick takeaway, it's, it's that. Okay. Okay. No, I love that. That's great. That's awesome. Um, I think you're absolutely right in terms of casting a vision um, and, uh, uh, you know, ha having that kind of idea of where you want to be in 10 years time, 20 years time, 50 years time. Um, right. I think that's really, really important in a leader. So yeah, that, uh, that's awesome. I actually quickly just wanted to um, actually maybe dig a little bit deeper there. Sure. When, when you talk about casting a vision, mm -hmm. what, what do you think is, is the actual, uh, or maybe, maybe I'll word it differently. How do you define the vision? Uh, well, I mean, I think it, you know, and it's interesting because I have a lot of clients that work on that. And I actually have one right now that I'm working with him. He's a CTO of a large organization and he needs to be thinking about his strategic vision and how he defines his department and what they're going to be working on. Yeah. And I think simply one of the easiest things to think about is taking the time to step back and really think what are these strategic imperatives? Mm. And when I mean imperatives, I mean, how does that relate to the business and move the business forward, yes. right? It's not, yeah. it can't be just mm. this nice to have sort of thing, right? Mm. You know, if reven if we're going to drive revenue, well, what are the business lines? What are, what are we going to do strategically yeah. to quote unquote drive revenue, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of leaders don't take the time to sit back and really think it's all about action mm. and it's frustrating for him. Right. But it's carving out that time. You know, maybe it's eight o'clock on Friday mornings. So that's when he thinks about it. Right. Yeah. But everybody doesn't have enough time to think, mm. I think, you know, in terms of, cause it takes time to think about your strategic vision and your imperatives and oh, yeah. what it is you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And people who are watching this right now, maybe you can relate to this. It's not about, you know, you working in your business. It's about you working on your business. And that's a big, Absolutely. massive difference. Yeah, because if you're Brilliant. working in your business, you're still tied down in the business. You're not making the business grow. You're just doing a job, right? Just like any right. other job. Um, so in terms of casting a vision, it's about looking at what we, we all know about the 80-20 rule, that is the you know 20% um, of your kind of tasks that generate 80% of your results, then you right. need to you know narrow down to what are those 20% and then ask the, the questions that help you actually find the solutions you're looking for. Uh, and, and the focusing question can be something like, what's the one thing I can do right now that allows me to 
you know, move towards achieving my 20% today? And, and that's the kind of powerful questions that will then help you get clarity on what your vision is and how you want to be able to achieve that. So uh, I hope that if you're watching this, you know, this makes a lot of sense to you because what Anne's just shared with you is absolute gold and I absolutely love it uh, because it's very much in line with everything that I believe, um, you know, about how you actually you know, make your business grow. So thank you for sharing that. And that was, that was great. Right. And you know, I think, so I'm going to contradict myself for a second here. <laughs> okay. Go for <laughs> All right. it. Go for it. That, Go for it. I, I, I like to do I love it. Yeah. But so, and I, cause I think you brought up something really important to highlight and that's do something right. Mm -hmm. Because I, I can remember, you know, I I've sat for many hours running into thinking about, okay, what are we going to do from a business perspective? What are we going to, but actually, too, it's about doing. Mm -hmm. Just do something. You know, Shonda Rhimes, um, who's done Scandal, the, the sh TV shows, she's the big TV show. Um, she talks about just do. Mm -hmm. Just do. Yeah. Sometimes it's better just to do something than nothing and sit back on the sidelines and overthink something a bit. Uh, it, you know, so just another contradictory point of view. <laughs> No, I, I, but it's absolutely true. And I, and I, and I like the fact that uh, you brought it up simply because, you know, would you rather be in the game or would you rather be sitting on the bench? Right. Right. So I, I don't know about, you know, uh, others, but I definitely want to be in the game. I want to be in the game. I want to be playing, you know, I might, I might, you know, fall over and hurt myself, but Hey, you know, that's something that I can learn from. Um, or, or I might, I might screw something up, but Hey, that's another learning point. Um, or I might score, you know, who knows? Right? Absolutely. So, uh, but you won't know until you try. So I'd rather be in the game than actually sitting on the sidelines on the bench, you know, just twiddling my thumbs and watching everybody have uh, part of the action. So yeah, no, right. I love it. Yeah. Right. When you look at somebody who's done something and say, I could do that, that means you were sitting on the sidelines. You can do it. <laughs> uh, you know, so is, is one kind of measure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I think that's that's some uh, really great stuff. I think you added a lot of value there. So that was awesome. Now, also, you talked about, you know, influencing others. Yes. Um, and, and that's, I think, really quite important as well. But I think for most leaders um, or, or, or managers or anybody who is in a role of, uh, you know, that that responsibility for them, sometimes it can be quite difficult to um, actually be clear on how I can influence because you don't mm -hmm. want to seem pushy. You don't want to seem bossy, but at the same time, you do want other people to be able to buy into your vision, which is something we right. just talked about. So what, what kind of strategies or what kind of, uh, tactics do you, do you share with your clients regarding how they can help other people buy into their vision and influence them? Right. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's some commonalities in terms of senior leaders that I work with. And uh, I can also give some book recommendations afterwards. But, you know, when I think about it, I, I all of, many of us, right, we have fantastic points of view. We have great ideas. And we kind of trip up, right? And part of that gets to influencing, I think about, and these aren't in any order, but listening, Really sitting back and listening to what people are asking you and what those questions are. And one thing I also like to say is it's really about watching body language in the room when you're influencing people, right? Mm. Because I say wow. body language never lies, never <laughs> lies. So watch, yeah. right? It's almost like turning the sound down. Turn the sound down in your next meeting and only watch people's body language. And I bet you can see what the meet, what what's happening in the meeting, right? Yeah. And I think too, I, I had this um, senior executive, he he's an SVP, and he was bumping up against his team and, and influencing with his peers because he had a one size fits all, right? He's direct. He's very direct in his communication and he you know, he said, This is the way I am. Take it or leave it. This, mm. you know. And, and and the point I said to him is well, how's that working for you? Because it's not, right? Mm. It wasn't. And it's really about flexing and meeting somebody where they are and what they need, right? And, you know, it can be frustrating, right? Well, I know that this point of view is right. But if your manager only wants the bottom line yeah. and you're giving them 10 pages of details, you've lost them on the second page, yeah. right? So 
I think one of the biggest things in terms of thinking about influencing is flexing your style mm. to meet who you are in terms of that in that meeting, right? Uh, and then just lastly, on an aside, I think many senior leaders forget about influencing their peers. We all need our peers. And yes, it's important to have a very family-oriented piece when you have your team, but if you don't have your peers helping you, you're not going to move to the C-suite level, right? Because part of influencing is knowledge. And you only get that, right, in by working with your peers because yeah. most of the time now many companies are matrix. So you need your peers. Yeah. You need people from other departments helping you. So yeah. I think those are just some tidbits. But Robert Cialdotti, who – Cheldani wrote um, Influence, right? And so he's he has some fabulous, you know, tactics and stories and ideas too in terms of how you influence. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm actually um, I think familiar with. I think you're you're talking about Professor Robert Cialdini, is that right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Robert Cialdini. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm familiar with his stuff. And, you know, people who are watching this, please go and, and check it out. I think Anne's, uh, you know, made a, a fantastic recommendation there. Uh, definitely, you know, Professor Robert Cialdini has some amazing stuff, um, you know, to share on that. You can just find some of his YouTube interviews or YouTube videos, um, or you can go and buy the actual book called Influence. There's another book I think he's launched quite recently called Persuasion uh, as well. Yeah. Yep. yep. So also, also uh, absolutely fantastic. So please go and check that out. But and you know, I think that was that was something really important that you touched upon the fact that you ha need support from your peers as well. It's not just about yeah. you know influencing your team. It's about also influencing your peers and actually you know um, having them around to to support you when you need it. Right. And for people who are watching this again, you know, you might be thinking, hey, I'm not an executive or a CEO or a manager of a team, but hey, we're, we're all still leaders in different areas of our life. You might have a family which makes you a leader. You might have children, <laughs> young children, and you have influence over them. You might have brothers or sisters who are younger than you. You have, might have a spouse or parents. And, and in all those relationships, your friends, your, your colleagues, your coworkers, your neighbors, you are in a place of influence. You're constantly you know, uh, trying to negotiate with them and influence them based on your ideologies, and they are trying to do the same. So in those close right. relationships, you are actually acting as a leader. You don't have to be an executive of some big you know, company to, to be recognized as a leader. So all these uh, you know, uh, kind of information and, and, and kind of strategies that Anne is sharing with us, I think can be applied to any situation really, and, and we can all use them in our daily lives. So um, I, I just wanted to highlight that as well, because you know there might be some people thinking there, hey, I'm not a big chief executive uh, or you know a director or a manager. It, you don't have to be, okay? Absolutely, that's a fantastic point. That, that influencing hits on every part of our lives, no matter what. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and let's uh, let's let's take it uh, a little bit further then. So okay. generally, you know, you obviously work with so many different clients, um, and uh, they all are facing you know different problems. They, yes. they might be going through different issues at different times, um, and uh, you know they they're asking for different sort of advice, but. What what are some of the common blind spots you think that leaders face today? Uh, so first, um, just to kind of also clarify, I don't give advice. I almost, what I almost do, and somebody, see, I learned so much from my clients, and he said this to me one time, that I hold up a very polished mirror for you to take a look at yourself, which I thought was awesome. brilliant. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's, awesome. that's fantastic. Awesome. Um, you know, I think blind spots when i think about some of the blind spots that people have this is a this is an interesting story so i was just doing and this gets to one point of it i was doing a training in this software company and the product man there was product managers there was senior software engineers and the product director just kept talking and talking and i looked around the room and she had lost, she had lost everybody's attention, right? But she had these great points and she was just going to keep going. And for her, that was a blind spot, right? She mm -hmm. didn't take a breath to really watch and see if, if she had people's attention in the room, right? And it's not just about being the smartest guy in the room. 
a lot of times people think from a blind spot perspective, it's about being the smartest guy in the room when actually sometimes sitting back and listening is actually much more, um, you know, important. I think another blind spot that some people have is um, being conflict adverse. They think that, for example, I, I have a very happy team everybody's moving forward, but are they really motivated and are they really learning because you're not, you're not focused on, you know, conflict. And I think to another big blind spot I, we just talked about is flexing your style. Yeah. It is, um, really thinking about, um, how do I flex in a conversation? And, you know, one way to kind of suss out is getting a 360, right? But, um, and real, and so a 360, just for everybody is getting confidential data about what you do well and what are areas of development for yourself. And there's many different tools to get to that. But for some people, even a blind spot is they don't want to listen to their 360, mm. right? And I, I think the hard part for all of us, you know, all of us is that perception is reality, mm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Either we think that we're being communicative, we may not be, right? Or we think that we're being supportive to our team and we're not, yeah. right? So that's kind of that blind spot about perception versus reality. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think you, you, you're very right. And, and those are can be some of the very common blind spots that people might have and they don't even realize that that they have those blind spots so um i think sharing them is great because anybody who's actually watching this can actually uh quickly do essentially a self-reflection on uh, you know how they operate and uh, it, hopefully they'll be able to identify any any of the blind spots you know you've just mentioned and then you know hopefully that'll get them started on the journey to to maybe fix them right and and also too it can just simply be about asking for feedback it doesn't have to be this, you know, big, long process. You can just simply ask for feedback. And I would say, if people don't give you feedback, ask yourself why, mm. right? Are you, are you creating this open space, right, yeah. that you can ask for that feedback to? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's really important as well, that people can feel they can be open with you because a lot of the time, you know, when you are somebody in the position of responsibility, it's quite hard for the people in the team to then step up and, and say something because they're quite, uh, you know, essentially shy or, or maybe even uh, conscious of how they might come across as in right. they might, you know, you might think that, oh, they're, they're actually criticizing me. And then, um, you know, they, they might think about the retaliation of that. So I think that's quite that's important to have that sort of environment. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Awesome. So, and I'm going to um, maybe put you in the spotlight a little bit uh, because okay. this is this is something that, <laughs> you know, it's something that I'm very curious about. Um, but, sure. but I'm sure a lot of other people out there are also wondering this. Having worked with all these clients for about 15 to 18 years, what would you say is the number one most important trait of a leader? Oh, that's great. That's a great question. And um, trait. So I'm going to turn it just a little bit. And <laughs> okay. if you don't mind, <laughs> and, and we'll, get, we'll kind of get back to that, because I think it really depends on the person, right? Mm. So, because we all have different strengths, and it's how do we leverage that, right? Um, you know, some people say, oh, and, and – this introverted leader is not going to go far. And that's not the case, right? So for me, it's not so much a specific trait, but it's things you do. Mm. So I think the things that you do, I love it. This is super simple. And I know this sounds super simple, but it's actually about working really hard. All of the senior leaders that are very successful that I've worked with, all work very, very hard, right? Um, and one other thing you and I were touching upon it too is I think there's a lost art about reading. We all don't have enough time to read now, yeah. which equates to learning, right? 
how can you make the and I suffer from this too and it I read I, I have to read a lot and I like to read a lot because that's part of my job but I think um, too it's really about reading that's a differentiator for a lot of people out there it's, and it's not just reading in your lane it might be reading fiction mm. it might be whatever that is right and then I think lastly too there's a, you and I were talking about this before we came on and it's about kindness yeah there there yeah and that you know and it's not letting people um take advantage of you but it is all about people whether families in the gym in whatever it is it is about people and being kind yeah and, and giving back it's not we all don't get to take and get it's all about kind of the giving and being kind piece to it too. So, um, you know, it really gets to about mentoring people, I think, throwing down the ladder a bit and helping people. Just as people have all helped us get where we are, we need to make sure to always be helping. So it's not about a specific trait. I think it's about the things that we do and leverage our traits and gifts, yeah. so to speak. Nobody does it alone, baby. You all need help, yeah. right? We all need we help. All <laughs> need help. <laughs> we all need help. But yeah, no, I, I love the I love the answer you gave there about you know it's it's about the individual and how you leverage your strengths um, and being kind. I think that's also really really important. Where you are open and you're transparent and you're genuine and you're authentic um, about yeah. everything you do and who you are and what you stand for and what your values are. So I think that's really important. It goes back to what we talked about about casting a vision and you know um, influencing people to to buy into that vision and how you do that is obviously through kindness and having an environment where it's all open for dialogue uh, and open for discussion so definitely I um, I love the answer and it, I think tied everything together quite nicely and it's also very much in line with Howard B has um, idea of uh, what he describes as a servant leader model whereas the yeah. leader is there to actually serve the team who then go out and become the em empire builders um, and, and, and grow the business on their own accord Absolutely. without without any input. Uh, and the leader is just there as, a, as somebody who empowers them and enables them rather than actually somebody who is there to push them and pull them uh, in, 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 you know, whatever direction they need to be going to. So I think that's really, really powerful as well. Good. Yeah, you know, I think the last point just to is about the authenticity, mm -hmm. right? Is to be genuine. I think just to also play on that is to be genuine and authentic because you can smell it out when somebody is not. It's it's very easy, right? It's just that gut feeling you have. Um, so it's really about being that genuine, authentic leader that you were discussing. Absolutely. Great. Awesome. So. And uh, there's actually a quote that says, leaders are born, not made. I'm just wondering, what's your take on that? Uh, well, as, as an executive coach, I would have to disagree with it. Uh, yes, there are people that are born. <laughs> uh, <they're... laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yes, are there people that are born to be leaders, right? Abraham Lincoln, Winston mm. Churchill. But they weren't just born overnight. There was a lot that went up to that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing that people say to me as an executive coach, very senior people, is it's overwhelming to make changes. And that's what we're talking about in terms of born versus made and the hard work. I like to think about it in small increments. What, how can I change how I speak to somebody in a 10%, just just small little increments. And those create larger changes for people over time. It doesn't have to be this big 180 change because that's not authentic either. So um, I do believe in change, but I think it's in change and, and working towards being a leader, but it's hard work. It's yeah. a lot of hard work. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think there are some people who, who have this right sort of personality traits and, and characteristics to be a leader, but that doesn't mean that they still don't have to do the, the groundwork and sharpen their skills. Because right. yes, they might have the potential, but that potential will not bear any fruit until they actually sharpen their skills. And, and you know, uh, that enables them to become those great leaders, like you mentioned, you know, Lincoln and, and, you know, Winston Churchill. But they were only able to be those great leaders because they worked on sharpening their skills. So I think that that, that, that was really, really important. Um, and um, I'm, I'm really grateful that you actually touched upon that because I think that's really powerful and, and people need you to hear that. Right, in that every single one of us stumble. Hmm. We have all stumbled. They have stumbled. It's what do you do with that to learn and grow to be better as a leader or whatever it is you do. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't matter what, you know, what segment. Absolutely. It applies to everybody. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and um, I would like to ask you some uh, kind of quick fire questions. I'd like to do a rapid fire round sure. as well towards uh, towards the end of the interview. Um, so, you know, you can you can obviously take as long as you uh, want for the answer. But, uh, you know, I, I try to ask some questions which are more directed towards the the actual guests themselves. Um, sure. So just to kind of find out a little bit more about them so, you know, the audience can connect with them at a deeper level. So what, what would you say are the top three to five books that have had the biggest impact in your life? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, I think, and I'll do quick fire back. <laughs> um, Paul Ben-Shahar, he writes a lot about positive psychology. I think books by Dory Clark, Stand yeah. Out, mm. I think, is another fantastic book. Um, and you see, I have a ton of books back here. And now uh, let yeah. me think. I, I, um, can, I can see a bit of Twilight in the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that would not be a book I recommend. It's so good with each reading. Let's go there. Yeah. Um, trying to think here for a second. Um, I think something from a fiction perspective. Mm. Um, I'm actually reading a children's lit book. You know, something that's outside of your what you currently read. That's what I would say in terms of recommending something. I'm reading a children's lit book right now, actually. Awesome. Not Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta read it, right? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, it's important to actually, you know, explore different fields and, and, and you know, other other sort of genres as well, because I think there might be something there that, that just kind of, you know, lights up a bulb because you're able to make uh, a, a unique connection be, between two ideas which were so elusive before. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with that. That's, uh, that's really powerful. Awesome. Um, okay, so the next one. And what are some of the, or, or your exact daily practices or daily routines that you follow that allows you to perform at such a high level? Uh, one thing I do is I always read every day. Um, I think about being grateful about a couple of different, whatever it is, two to three things a day. Um, I try to write every day, even if it's only a hundred words, I write that, um, and then obviously for me, it's a, to really trying to exercise every day because I think that, you know, we all need some of that me time, right? And yeah. then the last thing, even if it's just 10 minutes, meditating. Mm. And of course, for me, it's also family as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of meditation. I, I meditate every day as well. Um, I actually do multiple meditations, uh, you know, in a day. And um, I, I find them to be very, very empowering and very helpful. So and I talk about it a lot on the channel as well. So people who have been following this, you know, they, they will be familiar with this. We've talked about it extensively with multiple guests, actually, about meditation. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's great to hear that you have the practice as well. And I would say a lot of executives I coach with are now meditating, even if it's just 10 minutes mm. better than, you know, I, I, obviously it's not the best, but you know, something is better than nothing. Right. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. And so uh, another question, yes. how important is it to surround yourself with the right people in your life? I think that that is a hundred percent one of the most important things 
And actually, as an aside, I was just talking about that with my daughter last night, right? Wow. It's five people that you surround yourself with, mm. right, that make you a better person, Yeah. right? So even, you know, having a mentor, having people that have the same sort of focus that you have, I think that it is very crucial. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mentioned this pretty much all the time on on the show. Um, and I, you know, there's the Jim Rohn quote: "You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with." And I, I shared, you know, so much in during the show, and and you know, when we we're talking about different guests. So, people who are watching this, you, you know, this is not just coming from me. This is coming from you know Anne and all the other guests as well who've been on the show. Just how important it is absolutely to surround yourself with other empire builders about other people who are maybe light years ahead of you and they can help you and they can guide you and, and you know, um, kind of help you solve your problems and give you the answers to the questions that you're so desperately looking for. Um, and, and that makes yes. the biggest changes. Yeah, it that does. Makes the biggest changes. Yeah, absolutely. Because we all, as you said before, we really need our support systems and those five people mm. are there to support you. Absolutely. Right? You don't want that one brick mm. that's really wobbling there. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And it doesn't mean that we don't help each other. It just means you have to focus. Yeah. On who those five people are. Of course. Of course. So Anne, how how can we help you right now? Ah, uh, so I think that for everybody it's not really about helping me. It's about so going back, I think you've had some really brilliant points. You've had a lot of fantastic guests taking one thing that you've learned and use that in 2018 to make some sort of change for yourself, whether it's meditating, whether it's reading a new book, uh, making it a goal to read, you know, a book a quarter or whatever it is. So I, I think that that's, that's what I would say for everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, would be good. Well, would be important. Yeah, that, that will definitely be important. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. But, um, you know, if, if there's anything we can do for you as well, please do let us know. I'll be happy to, you know, jump on another call with you later if, if need be and, and we can talk further. Um, the last thing I really wanted to talk about is usually with all the viewers, I encourage them to try and make a reach out and make a connection with the guests to try and reach mm -hmm. out and at least start a conversation. So if there are some viewers who want to reach out and, and kind of speak to you, how, how can they actually reach out? Oh, I, I would be happy to. So the best place to go is to my website, which is annsugar.com. So it's A-N-N-E, sugar, just like sugar, S-U-G-A-R, dot com. And I have an email capture there that, or an email that you can um, email me there as well. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Awesome. Well, everybody who's been watching this, I think this has been a, a fantastic conversation. And, uh, you know, Anne's come on and added so much value. It's always my goal to try and bring on amazing guests to serve you guys. That's what I'm here for. And uh, Anne surely today dropped a lot of value on us. And I absolutely love this conversation. A lot of good stuff came out of this. And I hope you have, you know, gained something that you can implement in your own life. Whether it's something really, really small, just you know, from the book recommendation that Anne made to something really big. Maybe you actually want to reach out to Anne and uh, actually talk about how you can start a relationship and maybe how Anne can help you in your business in terms of how you can leverage your team and influence them uh, or anything else. So I think, you know, I, well, not think, but I always encourage you guys to go ahead and take action. OK, um, my job is to actually bring on amazing guests and, and you know, make sure that I introduce you and, and make that connection here on the channel. But it's up to you guys now to reach out and start that conversation. So please make sure that you do reach out to Anne. I think she's absolutely brilliant. She's so great. She's so giving um, and she's been absolutely tremendous. And it's been a pleasure to have her on. So and thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, Maybe, maybe if you are ready in 2018, we can go for a round two. Absolutely. And I really enjoyed speaking to you and your, um, and your audience. It was fantastic. Thank you very much. Cheers. No, no, it, it, it was a pleasure to have you on. Um, and guys, you know, as always, I really appreciate you sharing this time with me. The only thing I ask of you is to, if anything resonated 
uh, with you, then please share it with somebody who needs to hear this, somebody who is close to you, somebody who might be going through a time in their life where they're not quite sure, they're uncertain, they feel stuck. And there might be something in this, uh, in this episode that can really help them. So, you know, go ahead and share this. It means a uh, world to me. And we'll also love to actually connect with you guys and just find out about what you guys are up to and, and uh, you know, what is it that you're struggling with. So make sure you actually leave your, your comments below in the description um, and uh, you will also see, you know, uh, my email address and Anne's email address below in the description and uh, you can always reach out to us and we'd love to hear from you and uh, have a conversation with you. So make sure you do that. Other than that, thank you so much for sharing this time with me. As always, hustle hard and take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Yes. Bye.